Hello people, welcome back to my channel A to Z English Literature Channel. I am Susan. Today I am going to talk about Old English Literature. So in this lecture I will give you gist of Old English period, the language, the dialects, the grammar and the features of Old English Literature. So the period starts from 7th to 11th century AD. You all know that, okay? So friends, what are the features of Old English language? The first point, the English developed from the dialects of the Germanic tribes, Ankles, Saxons and Jutes. And English belongs to the Germanic family, a subgroup of the Indo-European family. So what are the points? English developed from the dialects of the Germanic tribes, Ankles, Saxons and Jutes. And English belongs to the Germanic family, a subgroup of the Indo-European family. Okay. Then what are the major dialects of Old English period? Old English period has four major dialects. They are Northumbrian, Mercian, West Saxon and Kentish. So what are the dialects? Northumbrian, Mercian, West Saxon and Kentish. Okay. So the Northumbrian and Mercian were found in the region north of the Thames and are collectively called Anglian. Then the Kentish was the dialect of the Jutes in the southeast. And in the late Old English period, West Saxon dialect of Wessex became the most significant and the standard for written prose. Nearly all the surviving Old English texts are in West Saxon. So what are the points? Northumbrian and Mercian were found in the region north of Thames and are collectively called Anglian. Kentish was the dialect of the Jutes in the southeast. And in the late Old English period, West Saxon dialect of Wessex became the most important and the standard for written prose. And nearly all the surviving Old English texts are in West Saxon, right? Next, the pronunciation and spelling in this period. Pronunciation especially of long vowels and it was different and it had letters and consonant clusters. So what are the features of this period? The pronunciation especially of long vowels and it was different and it had letters and consonant clusters. Next is the vocabulary. In this period, the vocabulary is purely Germanic words and the absence of French and Latin derivatives. So what are the features? Purely Germanic words and absence of French and Latin derivatives. Next is grammar in the spirit. Old English is a synthetic inflectional language. Words themselves change to indicate person, number, tense and so on. Modern English is an analytical language. So the, what is the difference between the Old English period and Modern English period? Old English is a synthetic inflectional language but Modern English is an analytical language. More than the changes within the word, changes of word order and use of prepositions and auxiliary verbs are employed. Right? Next is the Old English consonant clusters. Now we are going to analyze Old English literature. So what are the features of Old English literature? The first one, the period from the 7th century to the Battle of Hastings, the Norman conquest of 1066. So in this period, Old English literature flourished. Next point is the poetry. The poetry chanted by a bard to the accompaniment of a harp, right? Then the period was characterized by the imposing scholarship of the Christian missionaries. Okay? So friends, what are the major genres of this period? The major genres are epic poetry, hagiography, sermons, Bible translations, chronicles and so on. So which is the greatest work of this period? Beowulf is the greatest work of this period. And the major authors are Cademan, Kind Wolf, Venerable Bede. So in this period, the writers are Cademan, Kind Wolf and Venerable Bede. Okay. Next is Old English Manuscripts. So there are four major manuscript collections. First one is Junius Manuscript. Second one is Exeter Book. Third one is Versailles Book. 
Fourth one is novel codex. In this novel codex, Beowulf is included. So, novel codex or Beowulf manuscripts. So, there are four major manuscripts in the Old English period. The first one is Junius manuscript. Second one is Exeter book. Third one is Vercelli book. The fourth one is novel codex or Beowulf manuscript. Next, we are going to analyze Old English poetry. So, what are the general common features of Old English poetry? First one, it is mournful and elegiac. Second one, sings of sorrows and the ultimate futility of human life. Then, there are two types of poetry, heroic Germanic and Christian poetry. Okay, it portrays the helplessness of man before the power of fate. Alliteration and kenning, the elaborative descriptive phrases are in this Old English poetry. Okay. Also, internal rhyme is there and most of the poems are anonymous. So, these are the features of Old English poetry. Next, we are going to analyze the famous epic poem in the Old English period. So, which is the famous epic poem in this period? Beowulf. So, England's oldest extant national epic and written probably in the 7th century AD. And it survives in a manuscript called Cotton Vitalinus XV or Novel Codex. So, it survives in a manuscript called Cotton Vitalis or Novel Codex. And the manuscript was badly damaged in a fire in 1731 and it contains 3182 lines. And the Scandinavian story of the Gittish hero Beowulf is described in this poem. In the first part of the Beowulf, the Gittish warrior Beowulf kills Grendel, a monster who attacks hero at the hall of the Danish king Hrothgar and Grendel's mother who seeks revenge and also killed by Beowulf. Second part set 50 years later and Beowulf is now king of the gates and Beowulf kills a dragon who attacks his people and is himself mortally wounded and ends with Beowulf's sorrowful burial. So the features of Beowulf are sustained grandeur, baroque diction, brilliant style, set the standards for heroism and it offers lessons in moderation and humility and warns about the transitory nature of worldly glories and its fascinating representation of God culture. So, the fascinating representation of God culture. Next is characters in this epic poem. So, the first character is Beowulf, the young Beowulf, then Grendel, the monster, the monster's mother, Grendel's mother, then Hrothgar, Hrothgar's wife, then Beowulf's patron, Higlag and Higlag wife. So, these are the major characters in this epic poem. Next is Beowulf in pop culture, in the modern era. So, Beowulf was influenced by the 20th century writers like W.H. Auden, Jeffrey Hill, Ted Hughes and Seamus Heaney. Next point is an important point. J.R.R. Tolkien in the lecture Beowulf, the monster and the critics in 1936 held that the monsters are central rather than marginal to the poem's meaning. Next is Kevin Kerman produced the electronic Beowulf in 1982. Kevin Kerman produced the electronic Beowulf in 1982. It's a digital reproduction. Next. Seamus Heaney translated Beowulf in 1999 and recast the poem into a commentary on the history of the relation between Ireland and England. So Seamus Heaney translated Beowulf in 1999 and it recast the poem into a commentary on the history of the relation between Ireland and England. Next we are going to analyze authors in this period. First one is Cadman. Cadman was a 7th century Northumbrian poet, father of Old English poetry. So he was called as the father of Old English poetry and he was a brother at the monastery of Whitby and details of his life are known from Venerable Bede's Ecclesiastical History of the English Race in the year 1731. Cadman, he was an illiterate cowherd and a miracle happened in his life. At a feast that Cadman attended, everyone was asked to sing a song on a harp. 
but came in, left the hall, ashamed that he could not contribute a song. Later, a man appeared to him in a dream and said, Sing to me the beginning of all things. So later, a man appeared to him in a dream and said, Sing to me the beginning of all things. Kedwin was then able to sing verses and words that he had not heard of before. According to Bede, Kedman founded the school of Christian poetry called Kedmanian School. The poem he composed, Kedman's Hymn, the alliterative vernacular praise poem in nine lines. Next poet is Kain Wolf. He lived in the 9th century. Nothing is known for certain about his life and was probably very religious, believed to have lived to an old age which he left to be a burden and at some point of his life seems to have enjoyed the favor of princes. He was certainly a Latin scholar. In his poetry, the personal note is emphasized and even lyrical. With him, Anglo-Saxon religious poetry moved beyond biblical themes into the didactic, the devotional and the mystical. So with him, Anglo-Saxon religious poetry moved beyond biblical themes into the didactic, the devotional and the mystical. His major poems are The Fate of the Apostles, Juliana, Elin, Christ to or the Ascension. So the major poems are the fate of the apostles, Juliana, Elin, Christ to or the Ascension. There are some works belong to the school of Kind Wolf. They are the Dream of the Root, Andreas, the Phoenix, and Judith. So the works are the Dream of the Root, Andreas, the Phoenix, and Judith. Next, elegies. Exeter contains a collection of seven Old English elegies and themes of loss and consolation are the major themes of these elegies. The seven elegies are Dior, Wolf and Advisor, The Wife's Lament, The Husband's Message, The Ruin, The Wanderer and The Seafarer. So which are the elegies in the spirit? The seven elegies are Dior, Wolf and Advisor, The Wife's Lament, The Husband's Message, The Ruin, The Wanderer and The Seafarer. Next is Old English Prose. It contains sermons and translations from Latin. There are two types of Old English prose. One is Christian and the other one is secular. Christian contains the Alfred the Great, Elfric, Wolfstan. These are the writings belongs to the Christian. And the other secular is Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, Elfric, works on medicine, law, mathematics, rhetoric and so on. So, the major prose writer in the spirit was Venerable Bede. He lived in the 7th and 8th century, 40 books to his credit dealing with theology and history. He had a varied theme including commentaries on the Bible, observations of nature, music and poetry. So, Venerable Bede was a versatile genius. Ecclesiastical history of the English race was his major contributions to the prose literature in the spirit. It was written in 1731 AD, originally in Latin, Historia Ecclesiastica Gentis Anglorum, and written in five books. Ecclesiastical history of the English race was an authentic historical document. Next important prose writer in this period, King Alfred the Great. King Alfred the Great, King of Wessex from AD 1871 until his death in AD 1899. He was successfully resisted Danish attacks, translated theological and philosophical prose from Latin. Alfred the Great translated pastoral rule by Pope Gregory, history of the world by Orosius, and ecclesiastical history of the English race by Venerable Bede. So he translated Pope Gregory's pastoral rule, history of the world by Orosius, and ecclesiastical history of the English race by Venerable Bede. Alfred the Great initiated work on the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. Next prose writer, Elfric of Anshan. Well known for his sermons, homilies. His famous homilies are Catholic homilies and lives of saints. And he used plain English and sustained the interest of readers and aimed to bring Christians to a better understanding of their faith. And he wrote textbooks to teach Latin. 
Also, he wrote letters to teach Christians their duties and made translations from the Old Testament and New Testaments. His works were copied throughout the Middle Ages, the first Old English books to be printed. There are other minor writers. Wulstan, contemporary of Elfric, wrote sermons of which Sermon of the Wolf is important and he blames the sins of the English for the Viking invasion. Another term is martyrology related to this spirit. Martyrology means prose works about saints and martyrs believed to have been by a Mercian author. And prose on astronomy, geography, medicine, law, etc. has survived in this spirit. So, martyrology means prose works about saints and martyrs believed to have been by a Mercian author. An anonymous author also pros on astronomy, geography, medicine, law, etc. has survived. So, friends, this brings me to the end of this session. I will be back with another video related to Indian Net. So, stay tuned. Bye bye.